Hello, my name is Markus Hoffmann. I'm a grad student of the Technical University of Munich and today I want to talk about simulation, modeling and network guided detection of epistasis. In the past, many studies were conducted on the heritability of height. Twin studies predicted about 80% of the heritability. Considering only independent genetic variants can account for about 5% of the heritability. Both studies could not explain the full heritability of height. Newly identified rare variants are found in already known loci and thus do not contribute to explaining the missing heritability. So most likely, epistasis could explain the missing heritability. Epistasis are interaction effects between multiple genetic variants. Let's have a look on epistasis in a disease context. On the top, you can see the nucleotides of the DNA of a healthy human. On the bottom, you can see the nucleotides of an unhealthy human. The differences are single nucleotide polymorphisms, or short SNPs. On average, they occur every thousand nucleotides in the human genome. Epistasis is now a set of SNPs, which could explain a part of the heritability. So that means, if we consider the illustrated example SNPs independently from each other, then we cannot observe any differences between case and control samples. But if we consider them together, we can observe significant differences between case and control samples. This means, individually, none of the two example SNPs is disease associated, but together they are. However, we do not exclude SNPs which can be independently associated to a disease. These SNPs can still be involved in epistasis. In our work, we focus on three challenges. Firstly, we wanted to simulate data with a ground truth, as no real data with a ground truth is available. Secondly, we addressed some problems with the evaluation of existing statistical models. And thirdly, we focused on the problem that it is unclear how prior knowledge could be incorporated. Let's have a look on how we addressed the first challenge, to simulate data with a ground truth. To address this challenge, we developed EpiGen, an epistasis simulation pipeline. EpiGen is a realistic simulator of epistasis data with ground truth. This is needed to validate existing statistical models. You can see the features of EpiGen in the table on the right side. EpiGen is the only tool which can generate arbitrary phenotypes and simulate observation bias. EpiGen can faithfully reproduce many more characteristics of realistic data than other simulators. I now want to talk about the problems we identified with the current evaluation of statistical models used in literature and how we tackled them. For this, we published a paper, A Framework for Modeling Epistatic Interaction in Bioinformatics. Our main idea was to split the optimization algorithm from the statistical epistasis model. At the bottom, you can see the abstract workflow of an epistasis detection tool. As an input, the tool gets a genotype and phenotype matrix. Then the tool uses an optimization algorithm to optimize for a given statistical model. As an output, you get a candidate SNP set. Usually, this candidate SNP set is used for evaluation. To illustrate our motivation a bit more, let's have a look at the standard evaluation protocol. The epistasis detection tool gets epistasis instances with a ground truth SNP set which is usually simulated as an input. Then the epistasis detection tool uses an optimization algorithm to optimize for a given epistasis model. Afterwards, the highest scoring SNP sets are used to evaluate the detection power, the precision and the recall. So if your evaluation results in a good performance, you know that the optimization algorithm and the statistical model are both good. But in the event, of a bad performance, you cannot distinguish whether the algorithm or the model was bad. This is why we created a new evaluation protocol to determine the performance of the epistasis model by itself. 
As before, our data is usually simulated. As an input, we also use epistasis instances with ground truth snip sets. As a second input, our protocol requires random snip sets. Then, we use the epistasis model we want to evaluate to calculate the score for the ground truth snip sets and the randomly generated snip sets. Afterwards, we perform a one sided, one sample t test. As an output, we get a p value for the epistasis model. As a second evaluation criterion, we want to include the scalability, so the evaluation time needed by the scoring function. For both evaluation criteria, we want to achieve the lowest possible score. On this slide, we listed the most commonly used statistical models in literature. The Bayesian model uses a penetrance table and a K2-score. The variance model also uses a penetrance table and a chi-square score. The regression model uses a quadratic regression, a feature matrix and a negative log likelihood. For all of these models, it applies that the smaller the score, the more variation can be explained. We now want to include a new statistical model. We call it the maximum likelihood model. It uses the MLM score and a penetrance table. He also applies the smaller the score, the more variation can be explained. The motivation behind this was the statistical models usually use a penetrance table or a regression. We now want to exploit the best of both and combine the advantages. In the beginning, the maximum likelihood model uses a standard penetrance table. A penetrance table contains the probability of expressing the phenotype under study given a particular allele combination. Then we start calculating. First we test if enough samples are inside a cell. For this we train the hyperparameter tau, which we finally set to 20. So if this requirement is satisfied, we calculate the maximum likelihood distribution of the cell. Otherwise, so if the requirement could not be satisfied, we use the previously calculated global maximum likelihood distribution. Now we can calculate a score for a fixed SNP set. Firstly, we need to go over all samples and secondly, look at the likelihood for the phenotype at this sample. So at the maximum likelihood distribution for the genotype at this SNP set. The score is then the negative log likelihood over all samples. We used our newly developed evaluation protocol for the most common models in literature and compared them to the new maximum likelihood model. The maximum likelihood model outperformed the Bayesian model and the variance model, so the widely used chi-square test in terms of quality. The quadratic regression outperformed the maximum likelihood model in terms of quality, but at a much higher evaluation time cost. So in our opinion, the maximum likelihood model is the best compromise between runtime and quality and should hence be used as a default. Let's focus on the last of our current challenges. How can we find SNP sets of variable length in a reasonable time and how we think we can incorporate prior knowledge? For this, we developed GenePeaker, a yet unpublished tool for generic epistasis detection via local search. Our motivation was to find promising SNP sets by reducing the search space using biological knowledge. This could result in biological meaningful epistatic interaction. At the bottom you see once again the abstract workflow of an epistasis detection tool. We now want the optimization algorithm to recognize biological meaningful interactions. GenePeaker uses a genotype matrix and a phenotype matrix as an input. It also needs some additional SNP information, like location or our SID. We further require our protein-protein interaction network and dbSNP information. Per default, GDPSeeker uses Biogrid as a PPI. We ship the required dbSNP and Biogrid information up on download. As a first step, GeneEPSeeker constructs a PPI-based SNP-SNP interaction network and conducts seeding afterwards. 
Let's have a look on how GeneBeSeeker builds the PPI-based SNP-SNP interaction network. If two SNPs affect the same gene, we connect them with each other. The big colored circles represent genes. If the PPI network exhibits that these two genes are interacting with each other, all SNPs which affect these genes will also interact with each other, meaning we add edges between the corresponding SNPs. If one SNP is affecting two genes, but according to the PPI, these genes are not interacting with each other, we still add edges between the corresponding SNPs. Then we use the network for random seeding. The only requirement for a seed is that the SNPs have to be connected to each other. Then the model we want to use is selected. GDP Seeker offers the models most commonly used in literature, as well as the newly developed maximum likelihood model. GDP Seeker also supports multi-model approaches. For example, you can use the Bayesian model for seeding, then use the maximum likelihood model, and then calculate chi-square scores using the variance model. We also implemented a majority vote, which can use all four models to determine the best scoring SNP sets. After the selection of the statistical model, GDP Seeker uses local search to determine the best scoring SNP sets on the network. We support the operations add, remove and substitute to alter possible SNP sets. To overcome local increases of the score, we use simulated annealing. As an output, we retrieve candidate SNP sets ranked by their corresponding score by the selected model or in the event of the majority vote, we calculate a discounted cumulative gain. Genie Seeker is not published yet. However, we have some preliminary results for Genie Seeker using the maximum likelihood model. To evaluate the impact of the PPI-based SNP-SNP interaction network, we generated a degree-preserving random SNP-SNP interaction network. This means that we first build the PPI-based SNP-SNP interaction network and then rotate the edges, so the SNPs themselves do not lose any edges but are connected to other random SNPs. In this plot, you can see the negative log likelihood score of the model on the x-axis and the occurrence of this score on the y-axis. The scores of the PPI-based SNP-SNP interaction network are more on the left side of the plot than the scores of the random network. As we talk about the negative log likelihood, it means that more variation can be explained if the score is smaller, so on the left side of the plot. These results are promising for the detection power of GNP Seeker and the usage of a PPI-based SNP-SNP interaction network. Lastly, before I move on to the summary, I want to thank my research group for supporting this research. Professor Dr. David Blumenthal from the FIU Erlangen-Nürnberg, Dr. Markus List from the Technical University of Munich, Professor Dr. Jan Baumbach from the University of Hamburg, and Professor Dr. Tim Kapkowski from the Technical University of Brunswick, and the corresponding teams of XBio and CausiBio, as well as my student research helpers William Poschenrieder, Evelyn Scheibling, and Sylvie Bayer, who are currently working with me on publishing GNP Seeker. In summary, we can say that we made four contributions with our work. Firstly, Epigen, an epistasis simulation pipeline which can simulate realistic data, including arbitrary phenotypes and observation bias. Secondly, a new protocol for the evaluation of new epistasis models. This protocol separates the optimization algorithm and the statistical epistasis model from the epistasis detection tools and only evaluates the epistasis model based on quality and runtime. Thirdly, a new epistasis model. The maximum likelihood model, which calculates maximum likelihood distributions for each cell of a penetrance table. And lastly, GNP Seeker, a tool for generic epistasis detection via local search. GNP Seeker builds a PPI based SNP SNP interaction network and uses local search to find epistatic interactions, which could be biological, meaningful.